Welcome to Lecture Online and now we're going to learn something very interesting that most of us have probably never seen before, how to do square roots longhand. And of course, today with calculators, most people wouldn't even care. But this is kind of neat. It's an old trick, an old methodology that we used a long time ago. And so it's kind of fun to learn something that we may not need anymore because of calculators, but it's pretty neat and pretty amazing how that works, how people used to do things like that. So, you look at the number 500 and you're trying to find the square root. And so what you want to do is you want to break the number up into sections of two numbers. So you have 0, 0, and 5. You want to separate that. So draw a little, a little mark right there. And so what you do then is you take the first number and you come up with a number both by itself that is equal to 5 or less than 5. So in this case, I take the number 2 because 2 times 2 is 4 and 3 times 3 is 9, which is too big. 2 times 2 is 4. I put a 4 there, subtract that, I get a 1. Then I drop down the next two numbers. All right, now, what do I do next? Well, I know that my result is going to be somewhere between 20 and 30. I'm looking for that second digit there. And I know that 20 squared is equal to 400, and 30 squared is equal to 900, which means that the difference between the two is equal to 500, and then if I take the difference divided by 50, oh, not divided by 50, divided by 10, or 500 divided by 10, which is equal to 50, which would be the average difference between two numbers multiplied together between 20 and 30. For example, 21 times 21 or 22 times 22, the difference between those is close to 50. So what I do then is I take that number and see how many times it fits into what I have left here. 50 goes into 100 twice. So 2 times 50 would normally be 100, but that's not what we have. What I know is that my result, the square root, will be 22.0 or somewhere between 22 and 23. It could be 22.1 or 22.2 or so forth. So I know it's somewhere between 22 and 23, most likely. To find out what the next decimal place is, I take what I have over here, 22, and I multiply that by itself. And so I get 4 and 4, 4 and 4, that gives me 484. I take what I started with, 500, put that over here, subtract from that, 484, and I'm left with 16. Now, I want to drop the next number down in such a way that this number, divided into that, will give me somewhere between 1 and 10. If I drop a 0 down, and I have a decimal place here, so now I'm going to find the next number over here. I drop down to 0. 50 goes into 160 three times, so I know that the number is somewhere close to 22.3. If I want another decimal place, I can continue doing this. I'm going to multiply 22.3 times 22.3. That gives me 966644644. Add it all up, I get 921, 12, 16, 7, 1, 9, and 4. I get 497.29. If I subtract then from 500, so I do the same thing again. Draw a line here, grab my 500, subtract 497.29 that will give me a 2.71 and then I go ahead and move the decimal place over two places because I have three numbers there which is big enough I take the number 50 and ask myself how many times does it go into 271 and the answer is five times so my next number here would be a five and so I know that it's somewhere between 22.35 and 22.36, and I can continue this. I can then multiply my 22.35 times 22.35, and if that number ends up to be less than 500, I do the same thing again. I take 500 minus that number, and I just continue the process like that. And you'll find that you get something very close to the actual value of the square root of 500. Hmm. If you like that, let's try the next problem right there. 4,800, what is the square root? Again, I divide into sections of two numbers, so I go like that. And now I'm looking for a number, multiply by itself will give me 48 or less. Well, I know that 7 times 7 is 49, which is too big, so 6 times 6 is 36, which is okay. So I take the number 6, and 6 times 6 is 36, and the remainder is 12. And so what I do now is I drop down the next number, well, actually, the next two numbers. So I know that my answer is going to be somewhere between 60 and 70. I'm looking for the second digit there. 
And um, what I need to do now is say, well, 60 squared is equal to 3,600. And 70 squared is equal to 4,900. That means the delta between these two is equal to, looks like, 1,300. And the delta divided by 10 is equal to 130. So now I ask myself the question, 130 goes into 1,200 how many times? And it looks like 9 would be the answer. So I know my next number here is 9. What I do now is I take 69 times 69. So 9 times 9 is 81. That's 8. 54 plus 8 is 62. That's 54, 4, 5, 36, 41. Add it together, I get 1, 6, 7, 4, or 476, or 4,761. So then I draw a line here, grab my 4,800. Subtract from that, 4,761. The remainder here would be 39. I drop down one zero because that number would be big enough. So 130 fits into 390, two times, which means that it's my next number right here, two. And I can continue the process. I can say 69.2 times 69.2, whatever number I get. I subtract that from 4,800 minus my result. And I can just continue, or I can say 69.2, close enough. That's all I need to do. And so I know that it's probably somewhere between 69.2 and 69.3. And that's how we find the square root longhand. Pretty neat trick, huh? See what you can do with that calculators.